G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So today I thought I'd do my June 2020 fish room update tour. This is a couple new fish that I've spawned in the fish room since my last update, so I'll show you what those are. And I'll show you the progress of some of the fry that have been growing out in the tanks in the top row. And I'll show you how they're progressing too. So let's get straight into it. This tank is my albino bristlenose tank. The fry are feeding on some broccoli stems that I've boiled up for them today. They're constantly feeding and constantly pooping. And you can see the amount of poop this tank has. This tank gets water changes every three to four days to prevent the nitrate levels going through the roof. The little update is the male, he's in his cave. He has another batch of eggs. So I think it's his fifth batch. It might be his sixth. I may have missed, missed the batch because there are some tiny fry in here that are growing up as well. So that might be his sixth batch. He went for a period of not spawning for about a month. I put that down to me lowering the temperatures in these tanks. So these tanks don't have heaters in them. These tanks are just heated by aircon in the room. This tank is running at 22.6 degrees. Peppermint bristlenose tank at 23.2. These thermometers aren't the most accurate thermometers in the world. They could be out by a degree or half a degree, but they're still spawning, they're growing, they're doing really well. Here's the older albino bristlenose fry, also enjoying some broccoli stems. They've really gotten through it already. Anyway, they're growing up, they're going well. Okay, these bottom two tanks have bristlenose in them as well. This tank has my long fin normal colored bristlenose and they spawned. Now, the babies are really hard to see. There was heaps of babies in this corner here, just behind the pot the other day, but now that they've completely absorbed their yolk sacs, they're all dispersed throughout the tank. And I actually can't find any at the moment, but they are in here, and because the tank is black, they are camouflaged really well. You can see there's a baby bristle nose there poking out from behind the sponge filter. As I said, these are long fin, normal colored bristle nose, but they do have the albino gene in them. And I believe that bristle nose you just saw was an albino one that came out of these normal colored bristlenose. Hopefully it's a, a long fin albino because I'd love to spawn them as well. I don't have any long fin albinos. I've only got the short fin albinos. But if I get long fin albinos, that means I've got all four types. I'd be really pleased about that. But we'll see how that one grows up. In this tank, I've got the short fin normal colored bristlenose. So the most common type that you'd see in the aquarium hobby. And as you can see, I've got a half cup pot here and a quarter cup pot here. This is again another half cut pot and another quarter cut pot there. So the interesting thing with these two tanks, the long fin bristlenose, normal colored, they spawn in that, the, the quarter pot. The short fin, normal colored bristlenose also bred in the quarter cut pot. No spawning in the half pots. So that's a little thing I didn't expect to see. So they definitely like the tighter quarters. As you can see, there's no substrate on e in either of these tanks. And that is purely to keep tanks as clean as I can. You can see where the poop is, see how much there is and siphon it out. The other cool thing is with having bare bottom tanks is that I can use the bare bottom as a mirror and reflect light onto the bottom of the tank and see into the pot to see if there are eggs in the pot with the male. But anyway, I don't like having the lights on on these tanks for too long. These tanks are basically in darkness during the day. They look like that. <laughs> so the bristlenose are much more comfortable with no light. They like the darkness. And I got these guys to spawn in about two weeks of putting them into the tanks. I had them in this four by two by two tank with my cichlids, with my Tanganyikan cichlids. They never spawn once. Put them in separate tanks, two weeks later, spawn. Really happy about that. My white calvus, you can see the awesome looking male there. He's covering up his shell. So the access point I had to look down the shell and see the fry and the female in the shell is gone because he has covered up the entrance of that, well, my viewing point, the shell, he can still get in there as you can see, but he's doing some excavation and uh, keeping a close watchful eye on me. Uh, the female's at the back there, so they're not spawning at the moment. You can just see her head poking out from underneath that cave. That's her usual spot when they're not spawning. When they're spawning, she's in his shell that is covered on the left there. But let's look at their fry. Let's see how they're doing. Look at that, guys. Really happy. No losses yet so far, touch wood, from this batch. Be very careful about not stressing them out. I do not open the lid. You see the lid is partially off. Not like the first batch where I was opening the lid and clinking the glass accidentally and um, shocking the fish. And uh, are about a month old now. But let's look at their older brothers and sisters. So this is the tank that I started to lose fry out of because whenever I moved the lid, it was freaking them out and they were slowly dying on me. 
it took me some time to work out what was killing them and then until I realized that it was me just opening the glass lid that was stressing them out, sending a shockwave through the water. But you can see them there, they're getting used to me now, they come, they're starting to come towards me. You can see the size of the put on. They're almost, some are pushing two centimeters now. They're not sellable size yet. I'm gonna hold on to these guys for quite some time yet. Probably another five to six months. We'll see how they look then. Excuse the ugly on the glass, guys. I really don't care about that. My main concern is not stressing these guys out and just growing them up and keeping them happy and healthy. I haven't had any losses since I realized that's what was killing them off. It wasn't water parameters, it wasn't what I was feeding them. It was just me basically opening the lid of the tank, clinking the glass just a little bit. That was shocking them. That was enough to shock them and kill them. Learned that lesson over about a week or two. I haven't lost any since I changed the way I feed these guys in my feeding routine. And the next update, you can see the gold Ockies are doing really well. There's heaps of them here. They're getting their beautiful purple iridescence on them. And they're all starting to color up and get some yellow through them now. They're doing really well. You can see how, look how good they are. They're coming up to the front of the tank. They know when they see me now, they're gonna get fed. They're waiting for more food. They've been fed baby brine shrimp this morning. Another bit of an update. My Jitochromus ragani tank. This is my first breeding pair. You can see all the fry they got in the tank. There's 10 fry in this tank. Very juvenile adult pair. They haven't spawned since. I think I need to, if, I, if they're gonna spawn, I need to get these fry out of here and put them into a grow out tank. But yeah, these guys basically can have upwards of 70 fry per spawn. And the fry, the 10 fry you see here are over three spawns. But they're getting some nice coloration. You can see the blue on the, on the edges of the fins and some yellow, some yellowing on the lighter areas of their bodies. The other update, I'm using this as a grow out tank. It's basically a tank for my Ventralis Tritica, cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. Got two males, I think I've got three males in this tank and one female, unfortunately just the one female. And you can see I've got other Regani's in here. I actually have another pair, another breeding pair in this tank. And they've got fry in this tank and the fry are doing very well. You can see there's one there under the rock, under the, under the female there. There's about six or seven fry in this tank, another small juvenile pair that are starting to spawn. Here comes a female, I suspect what's going on. Beautiful fish, look at those markings, so striking. And uh, yeah, they're spawning in here. Okay guys, and the last update is this pothos plant. So I've had this pothos plant growing in my sump for a number of months now. I never put a light on it, it wasn't doing well at all. They are low light plants, but it wasn't doing well. Just tried that, thought maybe it might get enough light from the ambient sunlight that was coming through the room before I put the styrofoam insulation on the doors and windows. And I thought it might get enough light from the ambient light from the aquariums, but still no, not enough light for the pothos plant, even though it is a low light plant. I added a spotlight. This is just a 12 watt spotlight that you can get from Bunnings. I didn't bother with the eBay ones because I've heard a lot of bad reviews about them. They're not the wattage that they, are, the, that they say they are. But ever since adding this light, within a week or two, I've gotten two new leaves here and some new growth on the second plant because there's actually two plants here. So it's made a huge difference. And this light is only 12 watts. But for now, it's growing. It's taken up nutrients out of the water and hopefully lowering my nitrates. The last update involves this guy, my Neolamprolotus tetrathopalus. This is the big male. It's the largest male I have out of all the trets. You can see the Koenga Golds getting in the way because they want to be fed. But yeah, he's pushing five inches and his female's up here. That's her there. They used to be the dominant fish in this tank. He harasses her whenever they're not spawning, but when they're spawning, he accepts her, and they go and dig this pit down here. As you can see, they've moved a heap of sand around. Now, I'm considering taking this sand out because it's the second time they've spawned, and they've spawned on the sand bed. So I don't know if it's because they're still a young pair and they're not experienced. But it's the second time they spawn on the sand bed. It's about the seventh or eighth time the female has spawned. She spawned by herself about five times. 
before the male got the idea and cottoned on what he was meant to do. And she used to spawn on this rock here on the slate. She used to clear out an area of the slate, clear the sand away and spawn on the slate. Beautiful, happy days. Eggs aren't fertilised. Great. And now that they're a pair, they spawn on the sand in the cave that he digs. What happens there is the sand rolls back down the hill and they try and clear off the area where the sand is. They inadvertently pick up eggs with each mouthful of sand and spit the eggs out. And the eggs end up all through the sand bed. So they don't know really what they're doing, unfortunately. So I know I've got a breeding pair because I have seen wrigglers before when they've spawned before. But he will bash the hell out of that female the moment those fry uh, are wiggling, the moment those fry hatch. And yeah, again, he only really spawns with, or goes, lets her near him whenever he's ready to spawn. You can see he's looking at that area. There are eggs there still. It's been about three or four days now. I keep monitoring the eggs that are left in there to see if they're wriggling because I'll pull them out the moment they are wriggling. But it's just, yeah, frustrating. Now I'm gonna try and get some close-up shots of the eggs and um, see if we've got any wrigglers. Okay guys, this is really hard to do because I've got a torch in one hand and holding the camera in the other. But if you look closely, you'll see some of those white little dots are moving around. So they have hatched. They're very, very nearly hatched. Far out. Yeah, what do I do? Do I take them out and try and hatch them myself or continue to grow them up myself? Or do I leave them there? I think I will try and take them out. Might wait a little bit more to see if any more hatch. But there are some wrigglers there. At the moment, maybe three or four. Definitely can see that on the camera. It's hard to get this in focus because I'm looking down the side of the glass and that causes kind of a refraction look it's hard to focus but you can yeah you can definitely see some white dots wiggling around yeah there you go they spawned again hopefully I can raise these fry up let's see some wriggling Neolamprologus tetrathopalus fry there are a couple in here and I've made a makeshift egg hatchery so hopefully they survive there are more in this bucket that I've got to get out um, and I'm going to put, this, put these guys in the egg hatchery that I've made. The eggs are in, or the, the wrigglers are in I should say. So this is my makeshift little egg hatchery. It's just a tube from my vacuum uh, gravel cleaner. Got a sponge filter down here, sponge filter up here, airline on an airline hose there and some pantyhose just making sure they're not going to get through the sponge filter and they're wriggling about hopefully that's enough flow for them so there's six in there at the moment I'm going to catch more eggs as they hatch I'm going to wait for them to hatch before I put them in here really hoping they survive guys but we'll see so it's going well guys uh, all up I've pulled out 18 fry you can see them clearly there beating away hopefully they survive the night and yeah, they're still hatching. There's still a few more eggs in there in the main tank that haven't hatched yet. And I expect them to hatch in the next few hours. And as they hatch, I'll continue to add them to this lot. But we'll see how many we'll have in the morning. So there you have it guys, my June 2020 Fish Room Tour update. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.